All right. Uh, anybody that watched my last two videos know that I'm a Christian. But now you know something else. I drink and I know stuff. This is brought to you by Seagram's. The, um, a lot of videos all of a sudden are talking about forced vaccines for uh, coronavirus. And if you don't take them, they're going to pull you out of your house, stick needles in your neck. It's going to be horrible. Um, more left-leaning are saying Donald Trump is going to mobilize the army. And the army is going to pull you out of your house, stick needles in your neck. And it's going to be horrible. Um, more conservatives say that it's a liberal plot. And they're going to drag you out of your house, stick needles in your neck. And it's going to be horrible. Uh, so it's all going to be horrible. Um, and maybe it will. I don't know. Maybe it can happen. But I've been following the anti-vax arguments for a long time. Um, when I was a kid, we got our vaccines. Uh, we stamped out polio. Um, it was all good. We did not get very many vaccines, and they were very spread out. By the time uh, my kids, my my natural kids were uh, little. Um, I claimed uh, religious immunity. You know, they got the ones that they got a couple of them, um, but the the phone book full of crap that they wanted to give them, uh, they never got um, because I thought it was too much, too fast. Um, a variety of reasons why I thought it was. Uh, Bottom line, I thought that the insurance companies were too cheap to spread them out over, you know, a lot of doctor visits because each visit is a is a charge, and then you get charged for the shot. So if you can have three doctor visits and get a dozen shots instead of 12 visits, well, that was a substantial saving. So therefore, um, give them all at once. So if the kid ends up with autism or high levels of mercury or brain damage or whatever, it's not their problem. So as a result, religious immunity or religious exemption, and uh, and that was that. Screw it, you know. Kids never got sick. It was all good. Um, I make a living as a carpenter, building things and turning wrenches, running backhoes, and doing some farming, and listening to everybody's arguments over the years. Uh, I know no proponent for abortion, but I'm also not, I'm not so, uh, yeah, it's kind of like the line in the Bible about don't judge anybody lest you be judged. Um, you can tell somebody don't do something, but there's a fine line between being the judge and, uh, and that's how I feel about abortion. Um, I don't support it. I don't want it. I don't think it should be. Uh, I don't think it should be the way it is. Uh, bottom line, there shouldn't be any abortions. But you can't. You can tell somebody about the Lord, who is a Wiccan, but you can't take a baseball bat and crack their skulls when they don't. They don't convert. Um, and that's the way I feel about it. Um, there's a book of life. Some names are in it, some aren't. That's just the way it goes. Having said that, also watching the left use whatever is available um, to, to promote whatever they want. Uh, You've got some laws, you've got some things that were put in place for very, very good reasons, like the IRS. We needed a modern army, we needed a modern navy, states chipping in, you know, governors, Congress going back to the governors saying we need to raise money for a new battleship, going to the states, the states going to the county commission, you know, governors going to the county, the representatives in the assembly, going back to the county commissioners, telling the people we need to raise taxes because we need a battleship, or we need a road in Maine, but we're in California. Um, it, it really wasn't working out. So they, the federal government needed a cash stream. They came up with the IRS. 
it's been twisted into something it was never ever intended to be. Now it's a disaster. Um, so that's what the left has done with laws. So on that note, and a, on that thought, Roe versus Wade was an a, absolutely a miscarriage, um, simply because it was a state right, not a federal right. And uh, if one state, like Nevada, legalized gambling and prostitution, that was their business. And right next door, Arizona didn't have to because it was a state right. Um, gun control is a state right. Um, you know, there's a whole variety of things that are state, not federal. They're, it's the Bill of Rights. Um, abortion is one of those things. But it was passed on a federal level. But it wasn't... You can do your research and you can find 10,000 summaries that say it's a woman's right to choose, a woman's right to have an abortion, but that's not what it was argued on. It was argued on a right to privacy. And as a right to privacy, that was an absolute stretch, but that argument covers anything you want to do, pretty much anything you want to do. You want to look at kitty porn, and you've got a right to privacy. Nobody has the right to pry into that. Um, but they use the right to privacy to go forward and give that a right. It was argued on the 1st, the 4th, the 5th, the 9th, and the 14th amendments. Um, the right to privacy, the right to pursue happiness. Uh, the 4th is the right to privacy versus right to pursue happiness. Um, <clears throat> all those merits, all those, all those, uh, that's the same as vaccine. You know, you, you, they're basically using those amendments to argue for you have the right to decide on your own. And in this day and age, you know, back then in 1970 when it was filed, 1972 when it was finally decided, a woman had the right to decide what to do with her body. Fast forward now, what is a woman? What is a man? You can identify as anything you want or be anything you want. So therefore, that woman's right to decide what to do with her body should be extended to anybody has the right to do whatever they want with their body. Therefore, if you want to have an abortion, as of right now, that's a law that you can have it. If you want a vaccine, you can do that. If you don't want a vaccine, you don't want to do that. It's okay. It's it's all in Roe versus Wade. You can read the case. You can read the argument I have. It's there. That's that's the anti-vaxxers' magic bullet. I don't know why nobody. Anti-vaxxers are usually anti-abortion. We got to get rid of Roe versus Wade. Well, screw it. Push this through, and one of two things happens: either vaccine laws are gone or Roe versus Wade is gone either way it's a win so just saying um, the other argument for the vaccines is we are obligated to protect each other and if you are protected from a virus or a disease or whatever then you won't get it and you won't pass it to anybody else so therefore you have to take it to protect the people around you well, it was a lawsuit, and I think it was 2005, it was Castle Rock versus Gonzalez. And it, that case made it to the Supreme Court, and what they decided was Gonzalez needed police protection. They didn't provide it. Bad things happened to him. And uh, when that happened, he went after the police and said, hey, you guys are supposed to protect me. That's what my taxes pay for, right? And the court said, no, the police have no obligation to protect anybody. So that's pretty that's pretty big. I'm not gonna get into discrimination lawsuits because they're uh they're a dime a dozen, they're everywhere. But the but when one group has rights or privileges above and beyond another group, that is that discrimination. So if I have to take a vaccine to protect other people, but 
police have no obligation to protect anybody, then therefore the police are a privileged group and I'm a discriminated group. So on that argument, either one or two things, every cop should be ready to do some kind of diehard movie crap and do a dead man's run into a dozen bad guys with machine guns hiding behind cars and save the day or die trying or, uh, or that I don't have to get a vaccine. I have no obligation to protect anybody if I don't want it. I ain't going to take it. I have no obligation to protect anybody just as the policeman has no obligation to save my ass if anything bad's happening to me. Um, these are real, real simple concepts in law. These are very, very simple um, cases. I mean, it's like every every first year of law school stu student learns them. Um, I never went to law school and I figured it out. Um, I got, I don't know, what I got, 200 subscribers right now. About 50 people that usually watch me. I got no voice, but... Uh, Anybody that does, um, forward this, forward this, and then hopefully somebody with a legal background and knows how to file in the Supreme Court, the Superior Court, um, gives it some thought, because uh, we are talking about gunfights or, you know, wars with pens, and uh, for this country's sake, I think, you know, a war with pens is a better thing for it. But anyway, they're my thoughts for the night, and y'all have a great night. Bye.